<laughs> You're funny, right? Hey, tell us a joke. Yeah. <laughs> Your dad is a high school guidance counselor, the lowest form of therapist. He's worse than the free therapy app I downloaded that's obviously Russian spyware. О, это Вельма. Интересно, она гей? Father and daughter just enjoy a nice meal at a strip club without it being awkward. Uh, no. I'm out past curfew, and I think the movie Serpico is boring. What are you gonna do about that? Oh, gotcha. That is one big pile of shit. <laughs> yep. We're gonna do it. So HBO Max's Velma just concluded its season one, or... Well, I shouldn't say just concluded. It's probably been about two weeks, but you probably didn't even know that because one, you're not a YouTuber and an actual sane person that recognizes that they could literally do anything else with their time. Or two, again, you're not a YouTuber and even your favorite YouTuber isn't talking about this show. I've never seen a show of this caliber of IP simply fall off the map so hard and so fast from its first initial two episodes release. Now, when you think about the IP of Scooby-Doo and, well, Velma as a character, while having a niche community of fandom, she normally did play second fiddle to the usual cast of, you know, better characters. But at the same time, she was also being by far the most interesting character for a fully developed origin story, if done right. But strap in, brothers, because, well, you know why we're here. It wasn't. When thinking about what goes into a show in order to make it successful in even the mildest of manners, you think of all of the elements. Story, characters, stakes, progression, tone, etc. Velma has decided to forego all of those aspects when it comes to telling a compelling story for what Hollywood has now deemed as a reimagining. You just love to hear it. Another term to just hide the lack of creative talent that is in Hollywood today, as well as dealing with a form of an escape route when it comes to the product inevitably hitting its turning point with the fans, or in even rarer cases, the media critics themselves. Velma is the complete definition of crap. No, actually, it's crap. Actually, I'm pretty sure that still doesn't even get it right. Crap, mega crap. There we go. And we're going to review it. Velma follows the character of, well, Velma, and her journey of interesting characters known as the Mystery Gang, roaming city to city, town to town. <laughs> Holy shit, I accidentally started typing the script of a more successful show. Anyway, just go ahead and disregard all of that. The story goes as such. Following Mindy Kaling as our new reimagined Velma, we're transported all the way back to the origins of it all, high school. Alongside her classmates Fred, Daphne, and Norville as a new wave of serial murders targeting high school girls and extracting their brains makes waves through their town of Crystal Cove. Or more specifically... You guys talking about the hot girl list? Be careful cause us bitches will do anything to get on- <laughs> So funny. Man, this show really had no shame. With Velma being a main suspect and with the incompetence of the Crystal Cove Police Department on clear display, each and every episode, Velma is tasked with the case of solving the mystery of the murdered high school girls, as well as her own interpersonal conflict of the story of solving the case of her missing mother two years prior. Suffering from hallucination and panic attacks whenever she uses her cunning wits and intelligence to solve the case, will Velma be able to clear her name from the missing girls, and more importantly, will she be able to solve the case of her missing mother? While you might be asking yourself, where is Fred? Where is Daphne? Who is Norville? Well, they don't really have anything to do with the plot itself. You see here, this show is called Velma, and as with Jessica Gao did many of many times in She-Hulk, she is here to remind you that this is her show. But that's also not to say that Fred, Daphne, and Norville were just gray blocks of nothingness. <laughs> Maybe they are just that. Fred, Daphne, and Norville, while not really having anything to do with the overall narrative, at least are given the opportunity for a term that has been more than lacking in recent years when it comes to Hollywood. Character development. You see, unlike Velma throughout the entirety of the series, Daphne, Fred, and Norville are set up from the very beginning to let the audience know that these characters are at least in for a journey. And while you might be thinking to yourself, 
isn't character development for a prequel show basically inevitable in order to showcase the journey our characters have gone through in order to fully recognize who they are today? And while yes, my cheeky viewers, you would be exactly right, I just don't really give the benefit of the doubt to Hollywood anymore after, well, all of the dumpster fire new characters like Rey Skywalker. Imagine having to watch 8 hours plus of a character and, well, that character still has the same character traits that she had when I first met her. When it comes to characters like Fred and Daphne, while it might seem trivial and insecure at first, they do go through a journey of their own, finding themselves in who they want to be. Not being held down by a certain stereotype or way of thinking, but subtly realizing different paths along the way. And when it comes to Norville, I mean, let's just keep it real here. Mindy Kaling and this team of writers have to find a way to change this beta male of a character into the fearful and forever starving high guy that we all know Shaggy to be. And well, without giving away too many spoilers, as if you really care, by the end of season one, we're slowly but surely making our way there for those specific characters, no matter how bumpy the ride is along the way. And now, I still don't recommend this show even if you found yourself in a situation where you had all of the free time in the world and simply just had nothing to do. And let me tell you, it doesn't have anything to do with the meta jokes or the in-your-face idealism or even the fucking shitty comedy. It is the character and the name of the show itself, Velma. Velma has to be one of the most distasteful, unlikable, and straight-up toxic characters that I have ever seen put to screen. It's hard because while all of the characters in the plot is somehow trying to make its way forward, no matter shape or form, you always have Velma always there to make it seem so meaningless. She's selfish and immature, but worst of it all, she's ignorant and arrogant. A character that's not willing to understand her own flaws or take any sort of accountability for her words or actions, always brushing it off to someone else, halting what progression that the show could have had for itself for the sake of the worst character in the show. And while I mentioned that the shitty jokes and the meta dialogue wasn't really an issue once you get around it all, that's still not the case for Velma. Her dialogue seems like it's directly coming from a mouth of someone who hates the world, but believes that she's not the problem, but the world itself. No one ever talks with this many meta references, but constantly feels the need to shame not only men, but every single massive or niche social structure that she doesn't fit into. The jocks, the hot girls, the incompetent adults. The show is written as if Velma is the best of them, like she's Harvey Dent in The Dark Knight. That is one big pile of shit. But from an audience perspective, it's as if nothing gets in Velma's head because there's simply nothing going on up there. I don't know how else to describe such a terribly written character such as Velma. It's truly worse than what they did to Finn in the sequel Star Wars films. Because of the initial burst of the hate fandom for its first two episodes, Velma has already been greenlit for a season two. And while I did state that our characters not named Velma did have some form of character development throughout the show, Velma as a character herself made the entire viewing experience so tedious. And while in a perfect world, I would be able to assume that the main character of the show would have her much needed growth in order to even sniff the possibility of the same amount of hate watching that got the show another season, as stated previously, does HBO Max's Velma deserve that benefit of the doubt? Because as of right now, it just seems like Velma is the show that everyone forgot about. As I've said, there's simply no way in hell that I could ever recommend a show like this, even if you had all of the free time in the world. And I guess all of you feel that way too. Thank you guys for watching the video and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I have a couple more Velma videos coming out in the near future, but with a different tone. So stay tuned for that. Oh, also I have watched Ant-Man and the Wasp Mania, So we are going to talk about that. I just had to really think about the movie because we've been on a streak now with the mcu and i thought that maybe we were gonna get back on course with phase five and well i'll just save all of my thoughts for those videos so subscribe for that but otherwise that's all the words i got for you today bye